body. When you baptize, there's two ways you guys know that. One is a spiritual way. We turn from our old sinful nature, our sinful life, to a new life in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. By doing that, again, make us children of God. For in fact, this is, goes on to 1 Corinthians 12, 14. It says, for in fact, the body is not one member, but many. We make the body of Christ. Right, Pastor? Okay. I just want to be clear. So, that being said, the homonia, how we made ourselves, we're, we changed a lot over the last 25 years, thank the Lord, but we still got a long way to go. We were sort of an isolated people, dealing amongst, amongst ourselves, not dealing with, you know, we deal with certain vice or uh, certain groups. The Lord wants us to go out, to break out of those habits, to break those chains, Amen. to go into to share his word, his word with everyone. Uh, it says Mark, in Mark 16, 15, go out to all nations and share his word. All the world, we need to go out there. We need to step out of our comfort zone and go forward. And like Jeff said a few, uh, a few weeks ago, we're a forward-moving people. This is what we have to do. We have to break those boundaries. And like the song just said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. We have freedom to do these things through Christ. Amen. It's our freedom to go out, to break these chains, and to go forward. Amen. Amen. Um, 1 Peter 1.22 It says, Let brotherly love continue. The Greek words, Pastor told us this of many times, Philadelphia, brotherly love. It says, let brotherly love continue, because we're family in Christ. Uh, we know and acknowledge that our faith gives us a distinctive identity. Somio mio distinctive. It's a certain characteristic. And what characteristic is that? Whose character is that? Jesus. So when we have Jesus' character, we want to do what he did. How he went out to the people, how he saved people. Amen? Okay. Oh, yes, in 1 Corinthians 12 25, it says there should be no division in the body. And there was another word there, it was pronounced season, which means division. So, no division in the body. Amen? 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. Like a song. We just sing. <laughs> so where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. We have freedom to go forward through Christ. 1 John 2.9 Whoever says he is in light and hates his brother is in darkness. Okay. Whoever says he's in light and hates his brother is in darkness. Guys, this is a this is a pretty big thing here. Amen. Okay. Hate. There's various types of hate. I'm gonna go across a couple now. Uh, but these are some things we have to learn in order to go forward. Amen? Thank you, sir. Okay, the first word we're going to encounter here is prejudice. I'm sure you guys heard of it. You don't hear these words often, but I believe the Lord was leading me here so we could go forward. We're forward-moving people. These are some things we want to situate. We might not all have prejudice. We might not all have it, but um, if there is, the Lord wants to address this situation. Prejudice, definition, is a hate or dislike for a person or group. 
It may be someone made of a different color. But it is. Prejudice is a type of hate. Maybe we have that in our heart. This is something that we need, that needs to be addressed so we can go forward in Christ. Amen? Amen. Okay. Amen. Another word. Racism. Racism. These things are all affiliated together. Prejudice, racism, discrimination. Discrimination, here's the definition. Discrimination takes place the moment a person acts on prejudice, when they take action on prejudice. Racism, believing that one race is better than another. Did you guys hear that? Racism, believing that one race is better than another. You guys want to hear something? There's only one race. There's only one race, the human race. God created us. No Jew or Gentile. Amen, Pastor. We're not to look at a colored man and say, Oh, you gosh, my what are That's prejudice, that's judging. And people do it all the time. Guys, this is, I know it might be funny, but these, these are some things that we really have to change in our heart. These are things that how we was brought up, how we've been living, the home and the home some. Guess what? These are things that has to be changed. These are things that people have in their hearts and they don't even realize it or acknowledge because it's a bad thing. Racism, prejudice. We don't hear these words on the homini often. But I believe the Lord wants to bring this out. Amen? Amen. Okay. Understanding these things will help us go forward in Christ. Uh, like I said, some of us might not be prejudiced. Some of us don't have any of that in us. But the thing we have to do sometimes is because there's always something here. There's always something inside our heart that either we hide from the Lord. We all have issues. So we have to do, I, I heard uh, Pastor say this before, we have to fully surrender to the Lord. Amen. Devil, I open up my heart to you, Devil. Devil, any door that I shut and I keep away from you, Devil, I open it, Devil, and I give it to you, Father. Devil, search my heart and in those certain areas, Devil, that I hide, Devil, from you, Devil. I ask, Lord, that you take it away, Devil, in the mighty name of Jesus, Devil. And that's what we have to do. Amen. Certain things that we hide away from the world, God knows. We can't hide it from Him. Let's surrender it to Him. Amen? Amen? So, I know it's late, I'm not going to take too long here. Well, Alright, actually I'm done, guys. Okay. But, if we, but hey, if we really acknowledge it, how long have our community been here? Well, I've been here for 23 years. Guys, long time and I seen, I was here around almost 20 years ago. I was like 19 years old when we first came. Gabby Mark was what, two and three years old? Mm -hmm. One and two years old. Wow. And we've seen the church go forward and we thank the Lord for that. Um, so the Lord is really working in this ministry and we give him all the glory for that. Uh, Timothy 2 8. Yeah. I didn't write that part down. I didn't know there was a couple of Timothys. <laughs> okay. Timothy 2 8. I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer. Amen. Without anger and without deceit. Amen. Powerful. I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger or disputing. Hebrews 12, 14. These are just some scriptures. Uh, I know. Amen. 
Hebrews 12, 14. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Guys, very important, very important word there. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. The Lord requires daily righteousness. Amen, Pastor? Daily. We, we've been talking about this a lot. It's not come to church, uh, praise the Lord, and go home and forget about God. This is a daily relationship with the Lord. He, he requires this. So if we praise Him daily, have a conversation with Him daily, pray to Him, talk to Him, that's what He desires. Amen? Amen. Let's read that again. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Very powerful word. Acts 10.34 So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, no favoritism. Amen, Pastor. So right there it's telling us, he shows no favoritism. Uh, see, our eyes, our human eyes, we might see a uh, different race, a different uh, ethnic group. But tonight, we're all the same. God created us in his image. Amen. Amen. John 13, 34. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I loved you. You also are to love one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, basically, I know it was short, but uh, I didn't want to put that much information up here because we might forget. Peter was a very prejudiced man. Let me finish first. Even though he was born again and saved and spirit filled with the Holy Bible, he still had a problem with Gentiles. And what's Holy Bible that he would never walk in the house of the Gentiles. Even though born again, saved, spirit filled man. But in Acts chapter 10, that's when God went to work at his prejudiced attitude. There's another guy also, Jonah. He was looking at to go to the Ninevites. Never. He would give us. We still have our limits on what we will do for God. But Peter, born again, saved, spirit filled, Peter the Rock, was never so ill about the Gentiles. Now, Peter being no Lord, I, I, I won't not, I will never eat anything like that. He said, never so ill of a sheep, all kinds of animals, unclean animals. I said, never so ill of killing eat. Now, Peter being no Lord, I never have done this. But that was the whole story of Canada so ill finding. He needs to go play Roman soldier, Cornelius, non-Jewish man. Peter walked in the house and told him, you know what, I'm not supposed to be here. This is my limit. I can't. So what God had to do, he had to break his limits. Because some of us, we still have limits. I'm going to throw something at you. If you're walking on the street and you hear somebody screaming, I soon as you're going to say, buddy, bitch, or buddy, grappa, 50 feet in, I don't know how to stop this. And he's asking for help. I wonder how many of us would go down there to help him. None of us, right? But let me ask you this. Let's say you're in the ditch. And that same law of Nelson looks down and says, please help him. He would have no problem with him to help us. Jesus touched the most untouchable people. Jesus embraced the most unembraceable people. My Jephthah, my Jephthah Sun, my Jephthah Mill, my Jephthah Naswani was one of the twelve things. So Peter went to Cornelius and the whole house got saved. And that's what the Holy Spirit work is. To break the prejudice and to break your limits. Now, 